Okay. All right, and now let's get started. So thank you so much for joining me for the Natural Hormone Balance Masterclass. Today we're gonna to be talking over some really great um, things around our menstrual cycle and fertility and hormones. So today we are going to discuss what the menstrual cycle is, the different phases of our menstrual cycle and how to track our fertility around that. And we're gonna talk about some common symptoms of hormonal imbalances and how to address those hormonal imbalances through naturopathic medicine and with natural therapies. And of course, removing the obstacles to cure and my favorite area through gut health because there is a connection between gut health and our hormones and how other hormones in our body like cortisol, insulin, and others affect our hormones as well. And I am gonna talk a little bit about seed cycling and some common questions around that as well. I do have a offer for you all at the end of this. Um, this masterclass, I would really love if you guys stayed all the way through because there's going to be some valuable information from beginning to end. And then I do have a great deal for you as well to take advantage of. And a little bit about me. My name is Dr. Alyssa. I'm a naturopathic physician licensed in Connecticut. And I graduated from Bastyr University all the way in San Diego, California. So I have lived on the East Coast and the West Coast. I definitely am an East Coaster at heart. Right now, I went back to New York. I am, that's where I'm tuning in from right now. I would love to hear if you guys throw in the chat where you're tuning in from and the, around the country, um, just because I do, I love hearing where everybody's from and um, we'll get to know each other a little bit more throughout this and keep it a little bit more interactive. So let me know, where are you guys coming in from? All right, and then my passion is helping women. Oh, Wisconsin, I have never been there. Um, that's awesome. I feel like whenever I think of Wisconsin, I think of the, um, I don't know, I just think of cheese. <laughs> Everyone loves cheese. <laughs> um, all right, and so my passion is helping women who have been struggling with bloating, with constipation, and even hormonal imbalances, because I often find that these symptoms all come together in a package deal, which is so frustrating for us as women that we have to deal with all of these things together. And I am gonna talk a little bit about how those connect in a few slides. Our first interaction with our menstrual cycle was either getting our period or in health class where they said, you get your period and your cycle lasts 28 days. And after that 28 days is up, you get your period again. So, um, and it should be about this amount of days. And then you start from day one, count from there, 28 days, you get your period again. And that's really all we were taught about. And I want to provide a little bit more information around our period and around our menstrual cycle and how some hormones interact with our cycle and how the rest of our health interacts with our cycle today. And just a little bit about the average time of our bleeding. It should be around two to seven days of bleeding time. And if it's any less or more than that, we really wanna investigate why that's happening. And bleeding shouldn't be heavy. We should have about four tampons per day. That's about normal for um, bleeding. And that's from about 25 to 40 milliliters of bleeding per day is four tampons. And if you use something like a cup, you'll be able to measure that because there's measurements in the cup often, oftentimes. And if you're bleeding any more than that, you're gonna to want to get that investigated because not only is there a root cause of that, there are consequences of that as well, whether it be iron deficiency, vitamin A deficiency, or um, things like that. And the average cycle length should be around 21 to 35 days long. And like I said about menstruation, if it's anything less or sh less than that or more than that, you're really gonna to wanna to get that investigated. Not only is it, scary if you have something longer than that because maybe you think you may be pregnant and you're not getting your period and you're not sure why 
But if you're bleeding less, if your cycle is less than that, getting your period all the time isn't fun. And I mentioned before that we have multiple phases of our menstrual cycle. There's four different phases that I'm going to go over with you right now. Menstruation is the time of bleeding, the time that we get our period. And then that first part is called the follicular phase. And this is the preparation and the thickening of the uterine lining to help support egg implantation and pregnancy. And we have our ovulatory phase where we ovulate and release an egg and this lasts about 24 hours. And then we move into our luteal phase which the egg moves through the fallopian tubes and progesterone stimulates the endometrium to keep growing so that egg can implant into our uterine lining and support pregnancy. And one question that many of us women have is how do you know when you're ovulating? And this is a really great question for those who are trying to um, prevent pregnancy or trying to get pregnant and just trying to get to know their bodies a little bit more. And so one really great way of tracking your cycle and tracking your fertility is through the fertility awareness method. And this can be a really great tool for tracking your cycles, like I mentioned. And so what you're doing here is you're really just recording your basal body temperature and your cervical mucus. And your basal body temperature is the core temperature of your body that you can just take with a thermometer at home. And Hormones cause a change in basal body temperature. And so you just need a thermometer that has two decimal points measurements and it you measure it as soon as you wake up in the morning and before you get out, out before you get out of bed, before you check your phone, before you do anything, you check your basal body temperature with just a little thermometer under your tongue, like you would check when you have a fever. And so you track that throughout your whole cycle. And you know, um, and so your hormones influence that basal body temperature and estrogen right before ovulation is gonna cause a little drop in your, um, in your basal body temperature. And then right after you ovulate, you're gonna increase by 0 0.05 or 0 0.5 degrees and your temperature is gonna be higher than normal. And so it takes a few cycles to really get the basal body temperature down but it is a really great way to track your cycle and track to see when you may be ovulating. And this is a really great, great way to see if and confirm that you were just ovulating because your cervical mucus really tells you when you're ovulating and it tells you when you're about to ovulate. Cervical mucus can be found on toilet paper or you may just feel it in your vaginal opening. And this cervical mucus that tells you that you're ovulating and you're fertile is going to be, it looks like raw egg whites. And I know it's a little gross, but um, it's going to be clear, it's going to be stretchy, and it's going to be slippery. And this tells you that you're about to ov ovulate. And when you see the cervical mucus, you'll want to be more careful with sex or abstain from sex if you're trying to prevent pregnancy. And if you're trying to get pregnant, this is the time that you're going to want to try and um, get pregnant and have unprotected sex. And so in reality, there's a six day window in our cycle out of the month where you can get pregnant. And this is the opposite of what we've been told our whole lives where it's it was has been drilled into us that we can get pregnant no and at any time. And in reality, you're only ovulating for 24 hours and there's a five day window because sperm is sneaky and likes to hang out for about five to six days in your uterus. And so if you have unprotected sex um, five days before you ovulate, there can be a chance that that sperm is still hanging out on that day of ovulation to fertilize your egg. And so um, if you're not familiar with this method, it's it can be really hard at first, but once you really get to know your body and you get familiar with your cycle, then you'll understand when those times are that you're ovulating and you can confirm it with an ovulation test as well. And I'm gonna go over two of the main hormones that are involved in our cycle, and that inc includes estrogen and progesterone. 
Estrogen really increases during our follicular phase, and it helps to regulate our fertility and our menstrual cycles. It has a huge, huge impact on our brain chemistry and our neurons. So all of the, the molecules in our brain are control. They they can be controlled and influenced by estrogen. And this is why if you have more estrogen, you may have more symptoms of anxiety and of worry. And that's some one of the root causes of anxiety at some points. And estrogen is responsible for body composition as well. Estrogen loves to store fat. And so having excess estrogen can sometimes store fat in places like our abdomen that we may not always like. And it has a big influence on skin collagen. And this means that when you have excess estrogen, you may have signs of premature aging and premature wrinkling. So if you're really young and all of a sudden you have a ton of wrinkles under your eyes and on your face, you're not really sure what's going on and you have some symptoms around your menstrual cycle, it may be from high estrogen. And we don't want that. We love youthful looking skin here. We love to take care of our skin. We love to take care of our body inside and out. And we love our skincare routine. So if we're doing all these things on the outside to make sure our skin looks good, we need to make sure that what we're doing on the inside will help that as well. Another hormone that is very important is progesterone. And progesterone is really the hormone that's involved in the luteal phase. So this is the second phase of our menstrual cycle. And so the progesterone increases throughout the cycle and it helps for the preparation of the egg implantation in our uterus so we can become pregnant. And when there's no implantation of the egg, that's when the progesterone levels drop and you end up getting your period and it sheds that uterine lining and you bleed. Progesterone is really important at opposing and balancing the effects of estrogen. So you, you will find that there's a balance and then there's a pattern with estrogen and progesterone that when they're out of balance, they're, the symptoms are very similar as to low progesterone and high estrogen that we're gonna talk about in the coming slides. Progesterone is really important at protecting the gut lining, the gut tissue as well. And it's that some studies have found that when there's a low progesterone, that there's higher chances of you developing IBS as well. And also other inflammatory conditions. And remember when I said that estrogen loves to store fat? Well, I told you that there's a counteraction and a um, balance and of estrogen and progesterone and progesterone inhibits fat storage. So when you have low progesterone and high estrogen, then that's gonna be the perfect breeding ground for storing fat. But when you balance those out, they will balance out the fat storage as well. And I have talked a lot about the estrogen and progesterone balance. Estrogen and progesterone need to be present in order to counteract each other and balance each other out. If the levels are too far off, as in low progesterone and really high estrogen, then you're going to experience symptoms of estrogen dominance. And the symptoms of low progesterone and high estrogen are oftentimes the same. And even if you have normal progesterone and really high estrogen, you're still going to have a lot of those symptoms of low progesterone because that balance is not there. And here are some signs that your hormones need a little TLC. And if you're if you're someone who struggles with any of these, it may be some time maybe time to work on your hormones and do some of the things that we're going to discuss today. So if you have irregular cycles, heavy bleeding, cramping during your periods, we've all been told that cramping is a normal part of our period and PMS as well. Those have been so normalized in our society. And in reality, we don't need to deal with those. And if you look at the time that you are cramped, cramping up during your period, if you have cramps for at least three days out of your cycle, then that adds up to a month out of the year of cramps. And that is not something we want because that takes time away from other things that we want to be doing with our lives. 
Tender breasts are also another sign of hormones needing some TLC. Hair loss, anxiety, insomnia can be in hormonal imbalance, low libido, history of fibroids, migraines and headaches around your cycles and around your periods, acne and bloating can also be symptoms of a hormonal imbalance. And if you're having multiple symptoms around your cycle, then chances are we should be looking at your hormones. And so how do we address these hormones and how do we balance them naturally? The first thing is we want to remove the obstacles to cure because if we don't take these things out of our life, then it's going to be really hard for our bodies to heal. And so we want to limit the exposure to, to xenoestrogens. And what the heck is that? So xenoestrogens are the foreign estrogens that bind to the receptors that our internal estrogen that we make is supposed to bind to and it causes this chain reaction of all these different health effects and so some things that some xenoestrogens that we come into contact every day is our water our skincare products household cleaners produce pesticides Plastic is one of the biggest ones, and what a lot of people don't realize is that when it even says BPA-free, it still is disrupting our hormones because they just replaced it with a different chemical called BPS, and it is basically the same. And all of these things bioaccumulate in our body, and it interferes with our ability to process our hormones, and along with smoking cigarettes, so tobacco use, and alcohol, it interferes with our liver being able to process estrogen and do its job because estrogen moves through the liver and it's processed through the liver to get and to take it out. And um, if our liver can't do that and break down our hormones properly because it's overwhelmed with other toxins and other toxic products and xenoestrogens, then we're gonna have a lot more hormonal symptoms because those hormones are just hanging out on our body instead of being recycled. And stress. I once had somebody tell me that you can't produce enough sex hormones if you are constantly running from the bear. And if you have learned about the nervous system, you know that the sympathetic nervous system is the fight or flight, and it's when you're running from the bear that this is, nervous system is activated. But everyday stress can activate this nervous system as well, and if you're constantly feeling like you're running from the bear, running from the stress, then your body's going to be pumping out the hormones that are, are correlated with stress instead of our sex hormones. And so that's one area in our lives that we want to make sure that we address. And we can't completely remove all of the stress in our lives, but we can help our reaction to stress and help our bodies cope with stress. Another really big area is improving the diet. And we're gonna talk, I'm gonna talk about this briefly because there's other things and a few other slides that we're gonna talk about that deals with diet as well. So you want to make sure that you're eating a balanced diet between carbohydrates, proteins, and fats. Fats are not the enemy. We love fats because we love the healthy fats because they are the building blocks to estrogen and progesterone. And we want to eat less packaged foods and shop more produce and around the perimeter of the grocery store because those foods are usually found in the aisles and they have more additives and preservatives that are not good for our hormones or our gut health. And of course, we want to make sure we're eating at least 25 grams of fiber per day, depending on the individual, to help support healthy bowel movements. And the goal is to have one poop per day because pooping eliminates and flushes out the toxins in our body and it helps flushes out, flush out the estrogen that our liver has dumped into our intestines to remove from our body and eliminate. And we want to reduce the inflammation for better nutrient absorption so we can get those nutrients that our hormones need in the building box for our hormones that they need. We also want to balance the gut flora that I'm gonna talk a little bit more on in the next slide. And we want to improve the binding of the elimination of estrogen and its metabolites. 
And so some things that you can try if you lean more toward, towards constipation is in the morning before reaching for coffee, have your glass of water before you start breakfast and have it be warm lemon water to help stimulate the reflex that helps with pooping. So that's something that you can try out to see if it helps with your constipation. And if you have, if you tend more towards diarrhea, making sure that you're eating enough fiber to help bind up that stool and so it's not as loose. Of course, we also want to address bacterial imbalances as well. One thing I'm not sure many of you have heard of is the eschabolome. So this is just a collection of bacteria in the gut. So this is where gut health and our hormone health comes into play and where they meet. So the eschabolome has all is made up of bacteria and it is capable of metabolizing the body circulating, circulating estrogen. So what this means is that the gut microbiome creates these enzymes that help break down estrogen and break it down into little pieces so it can't be absorbed again and it's eliminated out of the body. And we want to make sure that um, we don't have too much of that because if, it, if there's too much, then it's going to be breaking it down into little pieces and it's going to be absorbed back into the body. And this puts it puts more estrogen in our body and it leads to estrogen dominance, which in those previous slides where I went over the symptoms like heavy bleeding, PMS, cramping, tender breasts, um, those are the symptoms that we're gonna get with estrogen dominance. And so the estrobolum is really a great um, area to um, look at when we are trying to balance our, um, our gut microbiome as well. Sorry, just give me one second. Okay, so another area we really want to make sure that we address is blood sugar. Blood sugar and hormones go hand in hand because inflammation can impair the ability for insulin to do, do its job and insulin needs to bring sugar into our cells. And if it can't do that, we're gonna have high blood sugar throughout the day. And first of all, having high blood sugar throughout the day isn't gonna be fun because we're gonna be irritable, we're gonna be cranky, and we're gonna be very tired. And that's not fun. But when we have high blood sugar, this signals to the pancreas to make more insulin. So if there's more inflammation and the insulin isn't doing its job, we're gonna keep making more, keep making more, keep making more, but there's the blood sugar, it, the sugar is not getting into the cells. So the blood sugar is still high and then the insulin is gonna go to the ovaries. It's going to signal the ovaries to make more testosterone and High testosterone equals acne, hair growth in areas that we don't want. So on the chin, on the chest, and on our abdomen, which is no fun. We don't like that. And irritability, no thanks. So we want to make sure that we're supporting our blood sugar and decreasing that inflammation. So things like diets high in inflammatory vegetable oils, diets high in carbs and not balanced with protein and fat, stress, smoking, alcohol, environmental toxins, and an unhealthy gut microbiome can really impair the ability for insulin to do its job and do and cause something called insulin resistance and give us that high testosterone. And when we get the, we'll get those symptoms of acne, hair growth, irritability. And then at the end of the day, testosterone gets converted into estrogen and when we have a lot of testosterone and it gets converted into estrogen, there's going to be way more estrogen being converted because that pool is already super high. And then you're going to get all the symptoms of estrogen dominance. And we do not want that either. All right. And so how do you help your blood sugar? Well, the first thing is to make sure that you're staying away from some of the inflammatory things that I had mentioned. So making sure that you're reducing your exposure to environmental toxins, you are addressing your gut health, and you are stopping use the use of inflammatory oils. But also, it's really important to have three balanced meals a day. And 
you want to make sure that you're eating enough protein, you're eating enough fats, you're having enough fiber along with those carbohydrates. And this is really important because it helps balance and stabilize the blood sugar. And for those of you who skip breakfast, do you ever remember someone saying to you, breakfast is the most important meal of the day? Well, they said that for a reason because eating breakfast is really important at helping support our blood sugar levels, throughout the day and setting the this, um, standard for um, a normal blood sugar and not having abnormal spikes of blood sugar and getting that irritability, that fatigue throughout the day. And it helps keep our energy up. Another really great way to help support blood sugar is having bitters before meals or if you're having high glycemic foods like um, pastas, white rice, white bread, potatoes, chips, crackers, making sure that you have about one to two tablespoons of vinegar with those foods. And that can just be a little shot of apple cider vinegar before you eat those. And that has been shown to reduce the spike of blood sugar in our body. Another really great way is hot girl walks. Hot girl walks are really a, um, a big thing right now on social media. So if you, um, do any walks throughout the day, um, make sure you do it in the two hour time frame of meals. So two hours before, or two hours after, because this really helps support blood sugar as well. It helps doing by doing this, it helps take the sugar that you get from your meal and it bring insulin brings it to the muscles and the muscles use that sugar as fuel. And so it's a really great way to get your body to utilize the blood sugar in a different way and not keep that blood sugar high. And magnesium supplementation is another way to help with insulin resistance and help support blood sugar. Some studies have found that it improves the insulin sensitivity. So when insulin comes knocking on your cell's door, it's not going to ignore it. It's going to open the door for it and it lowers blood sugar. And I would recommend doing a form that's more absorbed like magnesium glycinate or magnesium citrate. Another really great way to balance your blood sugar, but also support bowel movements and getting toxins out of your body is fiber rich foods. And so I have listed here a few fiber rich hormone loving foods because a lot of these foods have amazing nutrients for supporting hormone production and eliminating other hormones as well. And we're going to talk a little bit when we talk about seed cycling, we're going to talk about chia seeds, flax seeds, and pumpkin seeds in more detail after. And um, avocados surprisingly have a lot of fiber. And one avocado, there's about 13 grams of fiber. And it also has a lot of magnesium, which helps support blood sugar, like I mentioned on the previous slide. It helps support your nervous system, and it is anti-inflammatory, and it supports healthy metabolism of estrogen. It also contains potassium, vitamin E, and a lot of B vitamins that help reduce stress. Carrots are another really great hormone loving food because there's a lot, there's a decent amount of fiber in them. And they also contain the precursor to vitamin A. And if you do have heavy periods, this can sometimes be a cycle that you get into because vitamin A and iron work a lot together and having heavy periods reduces your iron stores and in turn also reduces your vitamin A stores. And when those stores get low, Weird thing is your periods get heavier. So you want to be eating foods from foods that have sources of vitamin A and precursors to vitamin A and carrot is, carrots are a really great source for that. Broccoli is another really great hormone loving food. It has a decent amount of fiber. So two grams of fiber per six flor florets. And so um, a little pro tip to get the most out of your broccoli is to cut ahead of time before cooking. So about 40 minutes before cooking. And um, what this does is it helps activate the enzymes that help break down a molecule in broccoli and activate it to sulforaphane, which is a molecule that helps our liver detox. And so far I've talked a lot about how liver detox is really good and supporting our liver is really good for helping clear out estrogen in our body. And so this is a really great 
uh, molecule and a really great food to help support our estrogen levels as well. And if you don't have time to cut the broccoli 40 minutes before meals, that's okay because there's other ways to get that sulforaphane as well. So you can top it with some powdered mustard, which will help activate that enzyme and create that molecule. Or you can just eat it raw because the act of chewing helps activate that enzyme and it's a lot, um, it's a lot better because you're not heating it up and killing off that, that molecule that hasn't been made yet. And I said we were talking a little bit about seed cycling today, so let's get into it. Seed cycling has been one of my favorite things lately because it really is a great way to get more nutrients into your body and it really helps support your hormones as well. And so if you're not familiar with it, seed cycling takes the two, fa two main phases of your um, menstrual cycle, so your uh, follicular follicular phase and your luteal phase and it has different seeds and oils depending on which phase you're in to help support healthy hormone production and it contains um it helps with symptoms like pms irregular periods missing periods infertility infertility and it's also very useful for menopause as well and how do you do it so um menstruation is a really great place to start so day one of your period you are going to have more seeds like flax seeds pumpkin seeds and this is going to the seeds are going to be the same for menstruation and the follicular phase i know i said that there were two different phases but there are some exercises that are different during each four of the four phases that um differ from from each time of your phase so that's why i broke it down into the four phases so during this phase, you have your flax seeds, your pumpkin seeds, and your chia seeds. You want to have two tablespoons of these ground seeds daily. You don't have to do them all. You can do one of them, but they do all contain um, essential, like not essential, but they all contain um, nutrients that are very helpful in our hormone production. Like flax seeds contains lignans, which are phytoestrogen, meaning that when we are cycling, this has an anti-estrogenic activity, so it blocks the receptors of estrogen and it helps clear it out as well. And then if you were doing this while you're in menopause, it's going to work to increase the, uh, the estrogen, so it has the opposite effect. Pumpkin seeds are really high in zinc. That helps decrease inflammation, and it helps once you get to the end of your follicular phase. It helps with the progesterone production. Chia seeds are really high in omega-3 fatty acids. This helps to decrease inflammation and support the blood flow to the uterus. So along with fish oil, which has omega-3s, this helps decrease inflammation. It supports blood flow to the uterus. It helps make up your cell walls and it helps decrease the production of prostaglandins, which are a major cause of period pain. And so at this time of our cycle, we really want to support the production of estrogen and because this is the time where estrogen is really increasing. And something that um, is different in menstruation is that when we exercise, we want to do more gentle exercises like yoga or walking because our body is going through a lot at this time and um, it's nice to just give it a little break. In the follicular phase after menstruation, the seeds are gonna be the same and the actions are gonna be the same, but the exercise, you want to do more higher intensity exercises because your energy is increasing at this time. And then ovulation is when you start at day 15 to use sunflower seeds and sesame seeds two tablespoons of those ground daily. And so sunflower seeds are a really great source of vitamin E and selenium. These help support progesterone production because during our ovulation and luteal phases is when the progesterone starts to really increase. And selenium also is really great at help supporting the liver to get rid of that extra estrogen that we don't need at this point in our cycle. And sesame seeds are rich in zinc and also have uh, lignans like the flax seeds, and this blocks the estrogen activity. 
And in this part of our cycle, we are going to be using evening primrose oil, which helps to become anti-inflammatory and it decreases the production of prostaglandins like fish oil does, and that can help improve PMS as well. And at this point in our cycle, it's really important at helping support the progesterone production and detoxifying your body from estrogen. And at this point of our cycle during ovulation, your, your, your energy is high, you're feeling good, and you want to do a little bit more higher intensity workouts because you've got that energy and you're feeling strong. During our, the rest of the luteal phase, the seeds are going to be the same, and we are going to want to slow down a little bit and do a little bit slower workouts like yoga, Pilates, and low intense cardio. And some common questions around seed cycling that I get a lot is, what if you don't have a 28 cycle, what do you do? Because that basically is around a 28 day cycle. And what if you don't have a period? You may just not get your period, amenorrhea, you may be skipping periods, or you may be in menopause. I did say it was good for menopause. And how do you incorporate these seeds into your diet? If you don't have a 28 day cycle, you can follow the 14 day cycle or the 14 day cycle for each part of this to regulate your hormones and nudge your body into following a 28 day cycle. So instead of figuring out when you're ovulating and when to switch over seeds, um, if you just stick to day one to day 14 as the chia seed, pumpkin seed, flax seed mix, and then after that you switch to sesame and um, sunflower seeds, then you'll help bring your hormones back into balance into that 28 day cycle. And if you don't have a period, what do you do? Especially if you're in menopause, this is a really great way at supporting our hormones during menopause. And if you don't have a period, then you don't know, really know when to start. But following the moon cycle is really a great way to do that um, because the moon cycle is about a 28 day cycle as well. And so on the new moon, you're gonna start day one. So you're gonna start that first part of seed cycling and on day 15 should be the full moon. And then you're gonna start that second half and then keep going with that as well. And hopefully if you are supposed to be menstruating after doing this for a few months, you may start seeing that you're menstruating again. And another question that I talked about is how do you incorporate these seeds into your diet? Because this is a lot of seeds and sometimes we may not know what to do with them. So I suggest often to grind up the seeds that you want for the week at the beginning of the week, just so you have them and you're not scrambling at the last minute to grind up all these seeds. And I like to incorporate them into smoothies, into yogurt, oatmeals, and salads because oftentimes these are really great and versatile seeds that you can really put in anything. I also would suggest if you're making a salad dressing or a pesto, um, a dip, then put the nuts or the, put the seeds in there as well. So if you're making a pesto with pine nuts and basil, add in some sesame seeds or sunflower seeds to give it an extra nutty flavor. And then you can also just make some nut and seed butters. So pumpkin seed butter is really great. Sunflower seed butter is another really great one. And then you can make your own sesame seed butter, but it, you can also get tahine and this is ground up seeds as well. All right. And so I really want to thank you all for being here today. I do have an awesome deal for you that I did mention at the beginning. I have a new client package that I am offering 15% off of when you book within the next 48 hours of this masterclass. And I will send the link in the chat. You get 15% off when you use the code hormone at checkout. And so what this includes is one initial visit with me where it's 90 minutes and we go into detail about everything about you, about your menstrual history, about your cycle, about all of your hormones or, or all your symptoms around your cycle and any other complaints or symptoms that you're having as well. You go into your past medical history and things that you've tried and not tried that um, you've noticed worked and 
We go into diet, sleep, stress, energy, and everything. I give you a tentative treatment plan after that visit, and we do some testing because this testing is included in this package. And after we do testing, there is a two follow-ups that we do. So we'll go over the test after that first visit, and I will give you a more comprehensive, personalized treatment plan in that 45 minutes. And I'll send you on your way to do all of the awesome things that we recommended. And in that next visit, we'll see how you've improved and what the next steps that you can take are to better hormone health. And so this, um, like I said, it includes testing and it includes either hormone testing or stool testing, whichever test we find is more prevalent for your concerns. And so I really am excited to work with you. And in the next 48 hours, you do get 15% off. So I would suggest taking advantage of that today. And I want to hear from all of you. What questions do you have for me about anything I talked about today, seed cycling, your, your menstruation, anything like that? Let me know in the chat or you can unmute yourself. All right. If nobody has any questions today, I am available online. So you, if you have any questions that come up after that you're thinking about, just reply to the email and you can ask me your questions there. I'd be more than happy to answer any questions that you have. Thank you 